The images I have in my mind of what's going to happen to me are that I will die. I didn't quite cope with it at first. I was like watching the doctor nod at me and sort of go, you do realise the immensity and what's going to happen here. And I said, no, I don't actually. And he said, I want you to quit your job, go home and get ready to put your um, matters into order. And I was like, so this is terminal. And he said, yes, it is. Nobody survives this disease. When I started looking online and understanding what I was in for, um, the scale of it uh, really rocked my world. I felt I was powerless. Can you get me up from here? Yep, sure thing. In the past, I've always been a person who's fiercely independent, quite driven. My life has been affected by the illness in many, many ways. Daily, sometimes things are robbed of you, you know. Not being able to swim anymore, not being able to ride the motorbike I loved, not being able to walk, not being able to feed myself. That upset me a great deal. I can't calm my mind so much anymore. I can't calm the system down because I just know what's around the corner kind of thing. I don't think you can do much more with this. Sorry. I'm okay. Motor neuron disease has hampered my independence immensely. My right hand is pretty much gone. I can't write, I can't sign my name properly. Like in fact, I can't even sign it beyond an X. It's embarrassing to have someone wipe your bottom. It's embarrassing to have someone shower you. The loss of my voice will be the, the brain crusher for me. And once I lose my voice and I can't articulate what I want, what I need, the frustration I'm having in, in trying to explain to a carer what they need to do rather than me being able to say those words is what's really frightening me. There's no point in progressing with this. It's not, not, nothing good is going to come from this at all. If I don't access voluntary assisted dying, I imagine that the disease will next move into my throat and shut down my capacity to be able to speak. So I'll no longer be able to express my, my desires, my wishes, and that will send me probably quite mad, to be honest. I can't see how I will maintain a stable mind. Mm. So I would ask the politicians of New South Wales to please consider my position and to allow me to make decisions for myself that involve my own life. When they vote with their own conscience, I would ask them to think outside the box. It's not just about their life, it's about the lives of others. And you're not really considering the lives of people who are under great stress in being able to continue living. If New South Wales does get the law passed, I would certainly be one at the head of the queue, <laughs> but um, I think it also will give me some sort of consolation in terms of knowing that it's there if I need it. I don't get too upset, have put all my demons to rest. I feel quite strong in facing this. My family and friends have all supported me. I want to be able to do this on my own terms. It's not about them, it's about us. Surely they can understand that people should have the right to be able to make a choice.